So when it comes to insurance, right? If you just have a regular car, you go and get your regular insurance. If you're doing ride share, Uber and Lyft, make damn sure you are talking to State Farm or to whatever one of these uh, many, many insurance companies, they know about ride share and they'll insist you get ride share insurance, right? It's, it's, it's a higher premium, without doubt. God forbid you just have a regular insurance and this is not fear mongering or, 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 or making anyone scared. Insurance is insurance. You just need to know where to apply it. And there's some channels giving out crazy wrong information and and hopefully you're not acting on it because if you act on it and things go wrong you're in deep deep shit right so there's there's a there's a few things you really need in this equation especially if you want to go into commercial and the individuals talking about commercial insurance they're not even in that business they don't even have the proper licensing right you got to make sure you have all your ducks in a row if you let let's take la for example how to qualify for uber black so the combination of being, let's say, on Uber and Lyft with the right car. Let, let's talk about a suburban, right? In LA, let's use city of LA as an example. You're not going to make the big, big money just being on Uber and Lyft because you have a suburban. You want to make sure you have your LLC, your company set up. You look at the licensing requirements in California. What do I need? I'll need my business license. I will need my TCP. What is a TCP? A transport charter permit. California will make you pay for it. The equivalent in New York, the equivalent in New Jersey, the equivalent in Texas or Florida. You want to make sure that if you go and start building out private clients, ladies and gentlemen, private clients, you want to make 100% sure you have everything set up the right way. And when we look at these um, texts that Uber is sending out, they can see more and more people are turning and a, a, a trips into cash, meaning they are bypassing Uber and Lyft. Now, if you are going out there and you're accepting cash, right, and you want to do this as your own private business, make sure that every trip that you take when you accept cash is at least documented so you're covered in case things go wrong, right? Especially if you're out there at a sports stadium or at Coachella and you're taking cash, make 100% sure you have your company set up, you have your commercial insurance set up, your vehicle is registered commercially, right? You have the state licensing, the business licensing, it's a lot of money. You can make a lot of money, but you've got to spend money to make that long money, a lot of money. And there are some channels giving up out such dangerous information where they might be in the field of ride share and once in a while they're taking a cash trip and they might, I don't know if they license to have the commercial insurance, but commercial insurance is very, very expensive, right? Personal, if something goes wrong with the person, the riders, you, you, you covered way, way higher dollar amounts, right? It's, it's, it's really, really, really expensive. I mean, you're talking like eight, 900 bucks per car. Now, I was up to 58 vehicles, down to 52, right? They are leased out at 550 to 600 a week. Do the math, right? That's 25 to $30,000 every week. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. But there are insane costs involved with that machine if you want to have that many vehicles on the road. And um, the people that drive for you or have leased the vehicles in a contract with you, and it's greatly explained how to become a private driver and build out your private fleet right below. But when you're out there and you're on the clock in LA and you're doing an Uber trip and something goes wrong, and believe me, my, my insurance had to pay out several times if the driver was on an Uber trip or if the driver was driving a private client. But it all boiled down to this, ladies and gentlemen. It, it, it boiled down to the requirements of that state and in the state that I'm doing most of my business in, I've got a couple of partnerships in Texas, New Orleans and, and, and other um, states, but the bulk of my business is done in California. Let me tell you that I, I better have my shit done properly by an attorney, right? Especially if things go wrong, especially if things go wrong. If the driver leasing from you is on Uber, he or she may battle it out with Uber with a deductible of $2,500. At the end of the day, 
it comes back to us. It comes back to our insurance. And here we have to follow the requirements. Documents, drivers using Uber Black or Uber Black SUV must be professional drivers. You have to have a certain rating, 4.85 or higher, right? With commercial auto insurance. Personal auto insurance does not qualify. That's where you get yourself into trouble. That is where the people face the insurance companies and the insurance companies are not paying out because they are hustling private clients on the side with personal auto insurance and then <coughs> get into an accident because they accepted cash or because they accepted Venmo, because they accepted a credit card, because they accepted Zelle. Everything is documented. So they've got you, right? It's a got you situation. The question is, when you drove that private client, when you had that private client in your car, when you had an accident, right? What was going on with your insurance? Well, if, if any accident happens, the shit is shared with Uber anyway, if you're on the Uber platform. So they're bound to find out. Find out. Many a times, oh, sorry, we're not paying a cent here. We're not even paying the $2,500. So if you don't have a good attorney in your corner, if you're not doing it the right way, if you basically trying to bypass the system and you have personal auto insurance and you think you're going to go and take private clients for cash, good luck. Get yourself a damn, damn good attorney when shit goes wrong, right? And you will always have those little battles with insurance companies. I had one battle with an insurance company, tried them out, didn't want to pay out $7,000 over a formality. Okay, easy. California, I can go to um, uh, to small claims up to 10000 I got the seven grand back, right? Now, if, 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 if it involves a, a huge claim against you by a passenger and you're not insured correctly, oh my God, it's going to get very, very expensive. It'll cost you at least 80 to 100 grand with attorneys if you have to fight that, right? So it's not worth it. It's not worth it trying to save a little money here or there because, oh, I'm going to use my personal insurance. I'm going to use my personal insurance for right here. I'm going to use my personal insurance for commercial. When things go wrong, they go wrong. And God forbid the one thing, if a vehicle breaks or gets hit, what, could be a few thousand to, what, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 complete write-off. That's the max. But when you hit, when, you, when you're injuring people in your car, it can go into the millions, right? The lawsuits come. And, oh, guess what? I didn't, I saved on the money because... I went out and got the wrong insurance. That's not fear mongering. It's making smart business decisions. And some of the channels preaching on this topic have no clue, have no clue. what They have a lot, a lot of knowledge and a lot of uh, information and trip information when it comes to ride share. You can make more money this way. You can make more money that way. You can uh, cherry pick. But if, if you want to go into the big league and make the big money, you got to make sure you have your contract set up. You have your commercial insurance setup, you have your state licensing, you have your business licensing, and you are in complete alliance with Uber. And sometimes it takes a visit to an Uber hub. Hey, what do I really need here? If I want to put my Suburban on the Uber Black platform, and I maybe want to start my fleet, what do I need? Don't talk to the front desk person, talk to the manager, try to get it in writing, right? Get some email dialogue going so you're covered. But hey, do you have an email? Can I contact you? I've got this car. Will it qualify? Get into a conversation with them so you have it on the record, right? But ladies and gentlemen, please don't try and shortcuts. I, I have seen guys get into so much trouble because they picked up. I know one particular person who was in his personal auto insurance that picked up at a stadium, a, a, a sports event, an NFL event, drove off, got into an accident, and then, and then the people um, sued him, right? had a long conversation with this individual. He only had his personal auto insurance. He went out and bought himself a nice suburban, didn't register it commercially, did not go and get the TCP, did not go and get the business license, wasn't even set up with an LLC. You know, he just happily was accepting cash here and there. That's not fear mongering. That's thinking smart. And anybody giving you other information is sending you in the wrong direction or has no clue how this business works right? We teach all the ins and outs at this course. That's why it has been sold thousands and thousands and thousands of times worldwide, not just in uh, LA. And the reason why Uber is sending these out, because they can see more and more people are turning to cash trips. Why are drivers turning to cash trips? Ask yourself that. Because they are being stiffed. 
They are, they've been, they, their money has been stolen on the Uber and Lyft platform. You cannot survive driving a, a Cadillac or a Suburban on a 70-30 split, 30 U, 70% them. This is why the people are going and doing cash trips. But when you're doing cash trips, please, if, if, if you really want to speak to the expert, go and speak to Alex at businessrocket.com. You got to dot all your I's and cross your T's, my friends, right? You got to have all the paperwork ready. And should you ever run into a situation, you will always have insurance companies that will try and stiff you or not pay you out. I've had to deal with my commercial insurance because commercial drivers leasing vehicles from me got into an accident. I've had to deal with the ride share side of insurance and Uber because people were leasing vehicles from me and they had an accident, not a bad accident, but they had an accident, right, on the Uber platform. So you will always deal with an insurance and you'll always be up against them maybe not wanting to pay out. Now you can surrender and say, you know what, oh, I'm gonna, I'll pay it all. Or you say, hang on, I have the commercial insurance. This is how I was instructed by Uber, right? It takes one letter, four or $500 for an attorney to their legal department. Hang on, my client is on your platform and has commercial insurance and everything you have online states he has to have. So why are you trying to weasel your way out there? Why are you not trying to pay out, right? This commercial insurance covers that driver on the Uber platform. It's exactly what you wrote here. No ifs or buts. So if there are drivers out there that are commercially registered, commercial insurance, driving with Uber on this platform in LA, and the insurance says, we're not going to pay out. And there's got to be something else. And make damn sure you have access to a good attorney, not just like a mediocre BC grade attorney. Get you, you got to have a good attorney with a name, with a reputation. Right. So, you know, it's, it's sad that people go out there, uh, give out wrong information. People follow that wrong information. You got to do your own homework. What does the state require from me? What does Texas require from me? What is I, I got to check everything. You got to pay to get that knowledge. You may have to pay an attorney to package you up in Florida or Texas. But once you have your company, your business formation, and you're following everything correctly, you're doing everything that the company wants. You're doing everything that the commercial business of that state wants you to do. You can't go wrong because you have done your homework. If you're blindly following some of these fools on YouTube, that are talking insurance and don't know about the commercial industry, don't know about cash payments, don't know anything, right? Because they've driven on Uber and Lyft and they think, oh, you know, no, let me tell you, it, there's a lot of money to be made, but it's a lot of work and there's also a lot of expenses. Nothing is just a simple walk in the park. What you try to do in your business is try to create formulas that you simplify your life and you don't have to put in crazy, crazy hours, right? You put it on autopilot. This particular business, the fleet business, I have on autopilot. If they need, need new tires, they know where to go. If they have electrical problems or trans, um, I have all the mechanics in place. Try to put this business on autopilot. This is what we teach you here. It is easy to have one, two or three cars on the road and make really good money. Or you could go to hire a car or Turo and, and have them take a massive broker fee out and you have your car, you know, in, in, other, uh, in, in other passengers driving your car through hire car, right? They have insurances in place, ladies and gentlemen. They're not stupid. You think hire car wants to get a lawsuit uh, because, you, uh, because you brought your car onto their platform and they facilitated a rider. They have the right insurances, right? This is important. It's very important for rideshare drivers as well. If you're on Uber and Lyft and you, you don't want to do this commercial business, right? And you, and you don't want to do this. Okay, might, might be too much of an investment. You, you don't want to go that route. Okay, I want to stay on rideshare. But even on rideshare, there's no, no fear mongering. Too many people are on their personal insurance and they know that all of these insurance companies have come out with the ride share variant because they know these insurance companies are not stupid. They know that there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of drivers on American roads that have a car and they're using it for personal use, right? And they're using it for ride share. Now, if you have a ride share insurance and you're doing your 
your, 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 your personal groceries, you're not even on the platform and you have an accident or somebody backed into you in the parking lot, that's a whole different insurance matter, right? Private person deals with private person, information gets exchanged, information goes to the insurance companies, uh, quotes, you have to drop your car off somewhere, you might get a loaner vehicle, but eventually the money flows and if it doesn't flow, if somebody's resisting, you get yourself an attorney, right? If you know you're in the wrong, they were in the right, they re-ended you and they say they want to claim otherwise, you get yourself an attorney. You will always have battles with insurance companies. I've had many, but there's not one single time I didn't get the insurance to pay out. Why? Because I did it by the book. I remember, you know, uh, I remember too many stories and comments and emails here. Oh, you know, it's okay. I'll, I'll do some private trips. So I'll do, I'll, I'll do Uber and Lyft on my regular insurance. Okay, gamble, right? Go to the casino, gamble. When things go wrong, don't come crying here, right? Because you know, you knew the risk. So it's important that people put out the right information, right? It's, it's, it, if, if, if you're in this business and, 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 and you know this business inside and out, go, go and make videos. I'm, I'm making videos. I can back it up, right? Um, because I know what Uber wants. I know what they want on the fleet platform. I know what they want when you bring a Suburban or a Cadillac or a Mercedes or a BMW on board. I know exactly what they want. And if it changes, you stay on top of it, right? You get the updates. But this is really what they're most afraid of, is that more and more people are turning to cash trips. And ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to go that route. Start building out private clients. Get ca good paying cash trips that are paying you double, triple the money, amount of money that Uber and Lyft are paying you. But make 100% sure you're following all the guidelines, right? Disclaimer here, following all the guidelines and you have your state insurance in place, your business license, your company license, your company formation, your correct commercial registration, your commercial insurance. There's five, six, seven things that you have to take care of if you want to start recruiting private clients. And if you want to learn that business and make the proper money, there it is. If you want to be a one man show and make 500 to two and a half grand a day, very simple, follow the formula. If you want to blow it out and start a fleet and make 20 to $30,000 a week, there it is, follow the formula. It's all based on numbers. And I'm not going to have people out there uh, defaming and there's still videos are out there right so their damages are going up and up and up because they've got a uh, some specific people got a cease and desist didn't act on it they kept the videos out and people are still referencing them so there's more and more and more evidence and three years later i don't want people to be surprised that three years later statues of limitations hey you kept up all this shit online for three years defaming handing out and, and have all the footage of them giving out the type of information, right? How they are educating drivers out there wrong, wrongfully, right? The wrong way. If people follow that shit, uh, follow their advice on, 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 on cash trips or on, on, on donations. Oh, it was only a donation. Fucking good luck if you're telling a judge it was a donation, or your insurance company that's in a multi-million dollar loss. Oh, it was a donation. I have never seen such shit being handed out. And I, God forbid, I pray, I pray, I pray. You don't follow these individuals' advice, right? And some people are just stuck in their ego. And then 36 months later, the law, statutes of limitations. Don't be surprised when you have to pay out big money, right? Because you're setting yourself up for failure, you're setting, and these individuals out there, they know who they are, right? But they keep on spewing, spewing the hatred, spewing the wrongful information, spewing shitty advice to drivers because they haven't been there. They haven't been in that seat. They've done right share and they can teach formulas. Stick with your formula. If your channel is teaching formulas how to cherry pick, stick with it, right? If you're out there and have a fleet of cars and you know all the ins and outs, you know the legal contracts and you know how to save people monies, on, on, on bulk cars, bulk insurance, bulk commercial, where to register. You know, you can save, you can save hundreds and hundreds of dollars um, 
going through a company setting you up the right way, the right tax way, whether it's an S Corp or an LLC, right? Making sure you get your TCP maybe in 30 days versus 90 days, right? There are ways to save a lot of money by dealing with experts. That is why we created the course, right? Every state Every city, including overseas in London, is very different to Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas is very different setting yourself up to, to LA. They all have their own requirements. So it's up to you. It's up to you. If you want to go out and enter the world of, of, of taking cash, you know, at, at Coachella, the people will come up to you and, and, and pay three, four, five hundred dollars because they cannot get a car. They don't want to sit there in the desert at one o'clock in the morning. They want to get back to Palm Springs. They'll get through. They'll throw you five hundred dollars cash at you. But when you accept those five hundred dollar cash, make hundred percent sure you have all your ducks in a row. Because if you're traveling down from La Quinta or from Coachella back to Palm Springs and you have some accident on the ten and one of your clients gets hit. You got, and that's not fear mongering. That's reality because the shit can happen, right? One drunkard on the way pulls out, boom, make 100% sure that when you accepted that $500 cash trip and your people are injured, that's not fear mongering. It is a possibility. It's the tiniest of tiniest possibilities, but it is a possibility. I've been in this game for 10 years with many, many, many cars, maybe five, six insurance issues, right? One I had to fight a little bit longer for. I'd still got the money, the seven grand, right? But you, you, you're not going to have this flawless business that never has issues, never has problems, never has accidents. It's not, it doesn't exist. Something will pop up on the horizon, wrong time, wrong place. And it may cost you a lot of money or it may just cost you a little bit of money. Please, when it comes to this, I'll, I'll let ride share experts talk about how to make the most money on surge and cherry picking on others. They'll outdo me here. But when you want to come to the commercial field and make the real money and build out fleets and enter the big league with the big boys, right? I'm, I'm telling you right now, I make sure you make your phone calls to the insurance companies, to the commercial insurance company. Make sure you go and get yourself an appointment down at the hub, speak to a manager, make sure you go down to the DMV and speak to a manager or something. So make sure you speak to a business consultant, make sure you speak to an attorney before you enter this arena. And don't just blindly listen to people spewing shit with hatred, this hatred, that it's just pure hang anger and jealousy. Because these people are not in this arena, not making this type of money, and they're getting pissed off watching other people make the big bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to make the big bucks, come over here, right? Let's talk. And, you know, this this course here, 300 minutes, pricing, how you're pricing out these trips. It, it's so easy to convert even a wealthy individual to your permanent private client. If you show him with one or two screens or with your phone live, this is what I'm going to save you on money. They love saving money. And then on top of it, you're driving safer. They've got consistency, punctuality. You know the airports, you know the highways. And, and that's when you build up a reputation and things just start blossoming. And when I say blossoming, referral here, referral there, referral here. Everything just becomes referrals. Oh, my, I'm, I'm recommending you to my friend. Oh, I have my business partner. He wants to use you. All day long, my friends. The course is below. The video today, quite a long one. We're talking about regular personal auto insurance. If you have your own car, you're not involved in the Uber and Lyft world. You're not a private driver. You're not a commercial driver. You just have a regular auto insurance. Easy. Many insurance plans out there. Ride share, you're in the Uber and Lyft world to recap. There are also many insurance companies out there that now offer ride share insurance. Will you get into some issues or battles with insurance companies? Yes, everything's gotten way more expensive. Parts have gotten more expensive. Cars have gotten more expensive. So insurance is just skyrocketing. And, and Uber knows this as well, right? And then if you want to enter the big arena and you, I, you know what? I've made money here. 
I now want to get a better car. I want to operate on this platform in LA, right? I want, I want to start off with a Suburban. I may want to then go to the auction and buy more Suburbans. How do I do that? We explain that in the course. But the combination of, let's say, having a Suburban at the right price on Uber, on Lyft, and then building out your private clientele, right, which you are invoicing or sending receipts, very much like the way bill, right, very much like Uber and Lyft, if they open up a business account with Uber, they, they're going to get the whole breakdown. You can cut and you can almost copy all the wording, right? If you're setting up your lease contracts with the, your individual drivers, you're choosing the very best drivers with the highest ratings who at least have one or 2,000 um, trips under their belt. And you can look at all, you can go and get yourself an Avis contract. You can get yourself an Enterprise contract. You can get yourself a Hertz contract. Read them, study them. They all pretty much have the same wording and legalities as far as lease. You may have to tweak it. You may have to modify it. But that's your, that's your print right there. If you're starting to create contracts with your drivers <coughs> and you're tracking them, you have a T-Mobile sync, you have a tracking system on board. You don't want your people to um, pretend like they're going to do business in LA and they're shooting out to Vegas each weekend. You've got to know where your drivers are on the grid. The, the Uber fleet platform is brilliant. I mean, it'll show you on the grid Right. If you set up on the Uber fleet platform, we explain this in great detail in the course, you will see where you, you'll see where Sherry is. You will see where Michael is. You will see where Alex is on the grid working. Right. What type of hours they're putting in? Hey, why are you not working this week? Oh, I'm sick. OK, well, if they're sick and they haven't made a single cent that week, they still have to pay you the 550 or 600 lease fees. And if they're sick for two weeks, and they're $1,300 in the hole and they still ain't driving, I let them go. Because you, you can't afford people, oh, I'll pay you next week. I'll pay you next week. Let's, let's, let's do the game of catch up. There's nothing like that. If you stick a few days, great. You can make it up in the second week. But if you have a driver who's constantly sick and is falling behind, you cut ties. You're not making money. It's like, it's like an apartment rental, right? You want to have good clients. You don't want to have people that you have to constantly evict because of non-payment. This business makes you a shit load of money. ROI, return of investment, 15 months, my friends, right? If you start a fleet per vehicle, the return of investment is in 15 months, but you have to follow the formulas. You have to follow the law. You have to follow the insurance. You have to follow the state requirements, the tax requirements. Do it the right way. Do not. I'm going to end this video. Do not cut corners. Don't think you're going to take a personal car or a Suburban or a Cadillac and you're going to do a couple of private trips. You might get away with it a few times and you will make money. But eventually, unfortunately, something, whether it's in year three or four or five, something happens. Right? We're not immune to accidents. We're not like accident-free driver for 20 years. Some are. Good for you. But um, hit me up if you have questions and uh, get the course. Start making money. Start accepting credit card payments. Start accepting Venmo. Start accepting Zelle. Start accepting cash. Cash is king. But always cover your ass. Thank you.